Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-16C Viper for DCS World and today we're going to be taking a look at quite a few things. We're going to take a look at the RWR, the radar warning receiver, as well as the countermeasures uh, system as well as its configuration. Um, now I am going to correct something that I stated previously in a different tutorial that was incorrect so let's go ahead and jump onto that right now. So I'm going to start out by simply coming up here. We're going to find a target real quick. I'm going to lock him up, and it's this circle right here, okay? Previously, I uh, misspoke and stated that this is the point at which um, the... Uh, I stated that this is the aircraft's position, our hostile's position. That's absolutely not true. I don't know why I said that. This is the aircraft's position here in the carrot. What this is, is this is the point at which the missile will go active when the AMRAM is selected. So this is the point the missile goes pitbull. So ideally, once this carrot is inside that circle, ideally that's when you would want to fire the AMRAM because it will then no longer, assuming all goes well and is correct, um, you will no longer require be required to give the missile any guidance. The missile will go pitbull as soon as it leaves the aircraft. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that I corrected myself on that real quick. Thank you to the gentleman who pointed that out to me. Um, and guys, I do want to stress that that's how I am. If, if I'm saying something wrong or, or missing something that's critical, please let me know. I'm not out to put every single little detail into these videos, but things like that where it's blatantly wrong information, I do want to correct. Okay, that that's not what this channel's about. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to help. Um, so please, by all means, point that kind of stuff out and I will correct myself. Um, last thing is a real quick update on a roadmap for us. Um, I know that there is one person in particular who's very anxious for us to start blowing stuff up. Um, so here's where we're at. Today is going to be RWR on the countermeasure system, as I just discussed, and then we will be looking at the IFF system, making sure that we understand where we're getting all of our contacts from, correlated, uncorrelated, what the different pieces of information mean, as well as the, um, uh, situational awareness, uh, um, setting the SAM setting and then um, after that we'll go into the air-to-air -air weapons we'll do it in one big shebang we'll go over the guns the sidewinder the sparrow and the AMRAM of course and this will all be in the ACM mode the air combat mode and in that same video we'll talk about the joint helmet mounted system okay or the queuing system um, and actually I think it's just an HMD display but anyway um, we'll go over that and then after that I think we will be ready for the air to ground series of the module okay so stay with me it's gonna happen really fast I took all of next or most of next week off um, so you know I got plenty of time to start punching some of these out um, don't think that DCS has fallen on the back burner for me. It has absolutely has not. It just takes quite a bit longer to get the content ready for DCS than it does for MSFS 2020 at the moment. I'm sure that will change for Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. Okay, all right. So now let's go ahead and talk about the RWR. Here is our RWR screen right up here. Now, first, let's talk about the bands. The least lethal will always be on the outer edge, becoming more critical as it gets closer and closer to the center of the aircraft. Any symbol on the on the screen that does not have either a diamond or a circle around it is what we call an open search track. Okay, so it just means that basically we know they're using their radar and we see them. They're not locking us. They're not tracking us. Any of the above. Okay, all we're doing is picking up their radar emitter. That's all that means. Diamond indicates the highest priority. That does not mean it's locked us. That does not mean that it's fired on us. It just means that it's been deemed as the highest priority. In this case, because there are so many MiG-29s out there or 29 tracks I should say um, likely it's been deemed priority because of its distance to the aircraft or the emitter strength that's detecting which again could be correlated to distance to the aircraft okay so just think of it on that terms circle however if you see a solid circle around any of the contacts it means that that track is locking the aircraft it is possible to see a circle and a diamond it is possible to have a circle and a diamond in, in, on a different track um, although very rare. I, I don't know that I've actually seen that, but based on the understanding of how the two are identified, I, I suppose it's still possible. So, um, diamond with a circle still just means that you're being locked, but that locking track has been deemed it's the highest priority. Um, and, uh, so I guess the better way to say it is it is possible to see a diamond and a circle and then another circle. So you can have multiple targets locking you up, but the diamond is always going to be your highest priority. So but an example would be if we had a SAM system here, we could have this MiG-29 locking us up, so we would see a circle and a diamond, and the SAM could be locking us up, which we'd see a circle around it, but no diamond. 
Okay. Um, so, flashing circle. And all of these come with different audio tones that you guys have to listen for as they pop up. But um, flashing circle uh, indicates that you have been fired on. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the other thing that's going to happen when you uh, missile launch is detected is this light is going to illuminate. You're going to see missile up top and launch on the bottom. All right, which brings us to our next button. We have mode. Currently, we are in open source mode or open open source open mode, um, which will allow the RWI to display up to 16 different tracks. Okay, if we hit the mode button and change it to priority, it will only display the top five. Okay, um, the top five, yeah, top five. Okay, now that brings us to our next, um, which is this T, which is target separation. Much like we were able to uh, spread out the different radar contacts on the F-18, for those of you who fly it, we can do the same thing with the F-16, but you must press and hold this button. And you can see that the contacts now separate from each other, but now the azimuth becomes inaccurate with everything except for the highest priority. Any track with the diamond around it, its azimuth will not be changed when depressing the target separation. However, once you let go of the button, I've been holding it this entire time, so once you let go, everything returns back to normal. Okay, so it still does the same. The feature is still the same, but it does require you to press and hold the button. So I don't know if that's something you guys want to map. I don't really see a need to, but, um, you know, to each their own. Okay, um, as far as these uh, three buttons here, system test, um, unknown boat or ship, and handoff, they are currently non-functional, so I'm not going to go over them at this time. Um, I figure just, you know, more salt for the water that doesn't need to be there. And one last thing on the RWR. Um, if you go to Chuck's DCS tutorial guides, I will leave a description to it in the description below. You can find it on either mudspike.com or you can find them on the ED forums. They are absolutely amazing. Um, page, let me find my notes, 353 has a full list of all the RWR contacts that may display up here on the RWR for your reference. Um, so I highly suggest that you guys uh, put that somewhere handy or at least take a look at it, get a reference, an idea of what you're looking at. Because, for example, some aircraft um, have the same signature. Um, example there would be, I think it's the, uh, the SU-33, the 27, and the MiG-29 will all appear as a 29 up here on the RWR. Okay? Um, so, anyway, make sure you guys check that out. So, um, let's move on. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the countermeasure system. So first, as we discussed in the first uh, course for this, the cockpit tour, this is our power button for the RWR. Now, real quick, there are two functions that aren't currently available, but I think will be soon. By default, the S that appears on the RWR that indicates a search radar should not appear unless this button is illuminated. When we illuminate and you see the S there, that means that the S should appear on the RWR, but by default, it shouldn't. Okay, but uh, so I'm hoping that eventually that's coming. Um, and then the, uh, as that can help you sort of declutter the screen depending on, you know, how many search radars are in the area. And then altitude, this one is um, one I am hoping for. Um, so by default, the RWR gives priority to high altitude targets. By pressing low altitude, it will obviously reverse that priority and give the um, low altitude uh, radar, sig or radar contacts radar emitters priority okay so that's all i'm gonna talk about with those two for right now let's go over to the countermeasure system rwr and the jammer system both of these work in con this is the countermeasure system that works in conjunction with these two when these switches are up the rwr what that means is that the based on the input information from the rwr to the countermeasure system the countermeasure system when in semi or automatic mode will then choose the best program to um, activate against a current threat against the aircraft, okay? So if we were in semi or automatic mode and, a, um, and this switch is in the forward position and a surface-to-air missile system locks up the aircraft, okay, um, and fires on it with a radar-guided missile, what would happen is the countermeasure system will determine what system would be best to defend against it, and based on our consent, which we'll talk about, in, which we'll talk about in a minute, would then employ that countermeasure system. Okay. Same thing with the jammer, um, with the electronic countermeasures. Um, again, using the information received from the RWR, the countermeasure system will determine um, whether or not the jammer emitter should be activated. Um, and then again, if it requires consent, it will, but, um, I don't even think the jammer is activated at the moment. I could be mistaken on that. Um, and then 
MWS is the missile warning system, which currently, is, which well, not currently, is not implemented in the Block 50 of the F-16C Viper. So the nice thing about this switch is if you're on a long flight and you're bored, flip away, pilots, because there's nothing that you're going to do that's going to hurt the aircraft. All right, um, 0102, these are for the external countermeasure stores that are not currently available in DCS for us, for this for the Viper. Obviously, here's the power switches for the chaff and the flare. Here's your bit on the far left position, and then programs 1 through 4 are um, the uh, manually activatable uh, programs. So there's a total of six programs. You have 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the rotary, 5 is on the slap switch right here which again is sort of like a panic okay and then six which is designated to the bypass mode okay all right which brings us to the uh, mode rotary so first we have standby then we have manual manual will allow us to activate manually activate the currently selected program on the rotary semi Okay, so in semi mode, the countermeasure system, based on the current radar threat, will choose the best program to use to defend against the threat. But what you're going to hear is an audible chaff, flare, chaff, flare. I might say countermeasures, actually. Countermeasures, whatever. Um, we'll hear it in a minute here when we go through the, the tests. Um, and um, what, that set, what that means is that at that point, you must give consent with a uh, switch of the uh, countermeasure switch aft, which will then activate the selected uh, countermeasure profile. Then what we have is auto. Auto does the same thing, only, for example, I put in auto right now. I can now depress countermeasure switch aft, and consent is now given. So what can happen from this moment forward, right now I'm in a perfectly safe zone. The aircraft isn't moving, as you can see out here, and I'm not in any danger. If I were to start moving, take us out of the active pause, go into a threat zone, a threat locks up the target or locks up the aircraft and fires on it, the RWR picks up that threat, relays it to the countermeasure system. The countermeasure system will then pick a program that's best used, that will best defend against the threat, and immediately start releasing the countermeasure system. Okay, now, consent can be removed for either semi or automatic by pressing countermeasure switch right. Okay, um, so if semi, an example of when that would be used, or actually either one of them, the countermeasure system is actively dispensing countermeasures. You look around, you know that you're clear, you know that you're safe. The countermeasure system still thinks that it needs to keep pumping. You want to interrupt it so it's not wasting anything. Countermeasures right, stops the consent, stops the release of the system. Okay, auto right now, I can go countermeasures switch right. And now what will happen if I that same scenario, I get to that hostile area, the aircraft gets attacked. I will now have to hit countermeasure switch aft before it will release any countermeasures. Okay, so that's all that means. Um, auto and semi, semi not as bad, but auto definitely. Uh, just keep in mind, historically, it's extremely wasteful. Um, and you know, that 60 and 60, that, that can be depleted pretty quickly. Jettison will dump all of your current flares on board. I don't believe it will jettison the chaff. I think it just jettisons the flares. Um, this can be used as a panic, but typically it is, its purpose is in the event of um, an emergency landing. Um, you would dump all of your flares out that way in case for any reason that you belly land or something like that um, You don't ignite the flares on board. Okay, which can then in turn ignite the fuel tank blah 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 You guys see where this is going fire gas large fiery explosion you burn. Okay, not good Anyway, so that is the countermeasure system activation um, Parameters there, but now let's go ahead and show you guys the controls that you'll need to map for the countermeasure system uh, so let's move this over. So again, moving our way back, countermeasure switch aft provides consent to semi and automatic mode. Countermeasures forward will activate the currently selected program on the rotary down here below. Countermeasures left currently has no function for the countermeasure system and countermeasures right will remove consent. Okay. Um, so the semi and automatic modes will either stop dispensing or will not dispense until, um, Authorization is given again or consent is given again. Okay. All right. So that covers the system down here below that covers your controls next Let's talk about changing countermeasure profiles. All right to look at how to configure the countermeasure system from any screen on the DED You can hit list. We're gonna to go to seven for countermeasures Okay, and we first we get to the countermeasure bingo and the enunciator page Okay, what and you can see this says default by 20, but if we dauber down 
you can see it switches to zero. So ignore that. Always dauber down first. Um, I don't know why it does that. I guess it's just the default, but I don't know why it changes when we dauber down, okay? Um, it goes to zero. But anyway, so here, just like with our fuel, when we set our bingo fuel, we want to be alerted when we're at 3,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, whatever. You can do the same thing with your, your chaff and flare. So let's say we want to be alerted when we're down to, I don't know, 20 of each. You figure there's 60 on board. Let's set it for 20. That's a good, good solid number. So we'll type 20 there. We'll dauber down. 20 on the flare as well. And as long as this bingo enunciator is turned on, when we reach 20 or below, we will get a low warning. It'll say low countermeasures. I think it says low chaff or low flare, depending on which one is set. Okay. Um, and then when we run out, as long as this enunciator is turned on, it will actually say countermeasure out, you know, whichever countermeasure it may be. Okay. Um, these are for the two outboard stores that are currently not implemented, so we won't worry about those. Let's go ahead and dauber around here. Feedback. It will say chaff, flare, chaff, flare, when you're actually dispensing countermeasures. This is the request for consent. What you will hear is counter, counter, counter. This is the uh, request for consent for the semi and automatic modes that we were discussing earlier. So once you hear that sound, you would need to press countermeasure aft on your HOTAS to give consent. And then that message should now change to chaff, flare, chaff, flare, letting you know that your program has been activated. And then finally, the bingo warning we already discussed. If you want to turn any of these enunciators off, you simply come up here, go to two, two for off, one for on, okay? And then up here is the selected program, okay? So you can set these based on each program, whether or not you want the enunciators and your um, low quantities. All right, so now let's actually look into setting up a program. So we're going to come over here and we'll go to sequence. Okay, so just sequence right. And you can see that we are in the chaff configuration. It doesn't work like the Hornet where we can select both. We're going to start with chaff for program one. Now, same thing. You can see this defaults to one, but I'm going to dauber down. And notice it doesn't do anything. It took me two to do that, and I don't know why. But now when we come up, we should be able to select what we want. So program one, let's say we actually we just want it to be flares because let's make it something that we can see easily when we go outside the, the plane. So we're going to go just to zero here on program one, and we're not going to worry about anything else because it's not going to do anything. And so now we're going to hit sequence right, okay, or uh, dauber right for the sequence, and let's look at the flare. And so let's say we want, um, let's do, and I'm going to do the same thing, dauber down first, then come back up. Let's say I want three flares to drop real quickly. Let's do three flares. Oh, I hate it when you do this. It's because I didn't hit enter. That was my fault. So let's go three flares. And this is in two tenths of a second. I don't want them to be quite that fast, but you do want flares to burst um, very close to each other to generate a lot of heat. Remember, that source has to be hotter than your engines. Okay, and that's also, you know, when you're dumping flares, if you can avoid it, try to do it without your afterburners on because, again, you're generating more heat at that point. Um, but let's have them do three, fa three fares, three flares and half a second. So here's how we're going to do half a second. We'll do five, zero, zero, and hit enter. And then it's how many times do you want me to drop three flares in half a second? Well, let's have it only do it three times for this particular mode. All right. So we're going to enter and dauber down. Now, how, many, how long do you want me to wait before I repeat this three times between each sequence, right? So in this case, let's do uh, three quarters of a second. So let's do seven, five, and go enter. <clears throat> All right, so here's what's gonna happen. When I activate this countermeasure, use program one, three flares are gonna drop, half a second of each other. It's gonna repeat three times with three quarters of a second between each time it repeats. So let's go out and see what that looks like. Uh, let me unpause my camera. That's why that's happening. And let's zoom out a little bit. And again, by the way, so we want our master arm on. And we have program one selected. We are in, as you can see here, a manual mode. So we're going to be using countermeasure switch forward to activate this. So countermeasure switch forward. Again, we should see three and three. So... And it worked perfectly. So we dropped three flares a half a second apart from each other. It repeated itself three quarters of a second apart from each other. And there's our flares. Okay, well, actually, we already lost our flares. Wow, those disappeared very quickly. Why am I turning? When did I turn the autopilot off? That's weird. 
Anyway, okay, so that's how you set up the flare or the countermeasure system. Now you can change which countermeasure you're on by this rocker here. So now we're on program two, three, four, and five. Now remember, five is the slap button up here. Okay, so this is a panic button. So you'd probably want a little bit of each. You'd probably want some flares. You'd probably want some um, uh, chaff. Okay, and let's go ahead and dauber around. Okay, and in order, by the way, you have to just sort of sequence through if you pass what you want. So if you meant to be on chaff and you went to flare, you just keep going sequence right until you get back to it. Okay. Um, and then program six is your bypass. Okay. And so if we look at program six, no, it won't let us in bypass. Okay. So um, bypass. You can see drops one of each. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's look real clear, real closely. You see the chaff oh, come out from just underneath the right uh, horizontal stabilizer there. Looks like a bunch of little sparkles. Okay, that's the chaff, and you obviously see the flare. So in bypass, you drop one and one in uh, by using countermeasure switch forward. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and stick ourselves into a not so friendly situation and see how semi and automatic work. Okay, so give me just a second. So unfortunately, um, I can't make the enunciators work. Um, I don't know if there's a bug that I was unaware of that is now developed in itself, um, but um, the enunciators won't come on. So semi on automatic mode, I they may be broken right now. There's the missile launch warning I was telling you about. We got the diamond and the circle. Let's dump our own flare. You can see that our countermeasures are dispensing. So I manually triggered the profile. Looks like profile one was manually activated. Which is a Tor, uh, an SA-15 that we're running from here that's being a pain in the ass. But anyway, so unfortunately, um, like I said, at the time of making this video, there may be a bug with the semi and automatic modes because um, I could not get them to enunciate. They would not say, um, I couldn't get the counter alert, uh, um, alerting me that a uh, request for consent was needed. Uh, master arm is on, the countermeasure system is activated, we were in semi or automatic mode, didn't matter which one, could not get the, um, the request for consent. Even if I gave it consent without waiting for the request for it, nothing would happen. Um, I just I think that that system is currently unavailable. So unless there's a parameter that I missed, um, which I don't think so, um, I think those two particular functions are bugged because I I was pretty sure that they were working before, but maybe I'm mistaken on that as well. But anyway, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know there was a lot to it. So we covered the RWR. We covered our countermeasure system, configuring the countermeasures to your preference. So um, have fun, guys. Play around with that a little bit. Set up your own uh, practice, setting up your own profiles. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one where we took a look at the IFS system. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Everyone stay safe for Labor Day. I will see you soon.